The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for the purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the, into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to perform the custom of law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, all. Good morning. Lovely to be back. I uh, I missed you. I missed you all. I missed you all. Yeah, I had a tough a tough holiday away. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know what you all mean. Yes, good. Um, today, I said I began by saying that today is a difficult feast for the the homeless because uh, we are in the the green time of the year now. And Sundays throughout the year, uh, but this uh, feast only makes sense in the in the Christmas season. Um, it's 40 days after the birth of Jesus. The Gospel makes clear that they went to the temple for the presentation. And in the early days of the church, this was the end of Christmas, lasted right up till today, the, the feast, 40 days. Now we have the, the 12 days of Christmas, don't we? We've cut it a bit shorter for the, for the, and we usually end the Christmas season with the Feast of Epiphany on, uh, on January 6th. So, um, there's only one thing to do, is to go back into Christmas time and pretend it's Christmas, <laughs> I think. Um, the, again, too, confusion comes around here because all of you that are my vintage, which are no, nobody's quite that old, um, <laughs> the, uh, you, we are familiar with this feast of the presentation as a feast of Mary. Uh, we're familiar with the fourth of the joyful mysteries of the rosary and the presentation uh, is generally uh, associated with the, uh, the the seven sorrows of Mary, for example, and devotion to her, the, the Simeon's prophecy and Anna's prophecy that the child would be, uh, you know, a sword that would pierce her heart and her child would be a contradiction uh, to many, uh, as well as being a light to the nations. So uh, there is a feast day, November 3rd, I think, uh, of the presentation of Mary, where she was presented in the temple as a baby by her parents. But this is the presentation of the Lord by his parents. So again, let's not be confused about what it is. Because it is a feast of the presentation of the Lord, then it's allowed to have precedence on a Sunday over the normal Sundays of the year. Because the Sunday is the Lord's day, and the Lord gives way to nobody. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so it's all of that's gone through my head in confusion and trying to put all these points together. So you know where I am. So I'm back in the Christmas season after having survived it fairly well this year, I might add, and I'm back into it again. And uh, the gospel ends with the, the journey of Jesus back to Nazareth where he spends the next 30 years with his parents and we know very, very little about that 30 years of the life of Jesus. And I, I like to just make the point uh, to the young people, if you're impatient about where the Lord's leading you and where he's taking you and where you're going to be, um, Jesus spent 10 times longer at home than he spent in public ministry. 30 years against three, amen? 
3 into 30 goes 10. Amen? Uh, that's, uh, and it's an extraordinary, it's an extraordinary statistic that the, that the child that comes down for the redemption of the world seems to waste so much waste in inverted commas, so much time doing nothing. And, you know, and he gave more, I read in a book once a lovely holy person wrote that Jesus gave more glory to God in those 30 years just being at home with his parents than he could have done if he went and saved the whole world in that time because he was doing what God wanted him to do which is more important than what you think is the most important and urgent thing in the world. Sometimes urgent things aren't that important. Does that sound Irish? Can I say that again? Sometimes urgent things aren't that important. And Jesus is a great lesson in, in the, you know, the patience, I'm sure. We know he was, remember when he was 12 and he was said to his parents, didn't you know I should be about my father's business? He was getting cheeky before he was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that. So today, Mary and Joseph go up to the temple. They do what every parent does in their time. See, they, they were born, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, so they're not far from Jerusalem. If you get your geography right, they're not far from Jerusalem. Forty days after the birth of the child, they go up to the temple and they dedicate their child to the Lord. The firstborn is consecrated to the Lord. In, uh, that's the tradition in their time. Uh, all you parents have brought your children up for baptism and you've consecrated them to the Lord. You've blessed them, asked the Lord to bless them. Mary and Joseph went through that same thing. You know, and the wonder of it is that the, the incarnate Son of God uh, was, was, you know, he was... He emptied himself and became as we are, Paul says. And he became even like a slave, like us in all things. And that's the reason why God made him Lord and put him in charge of everything. So it's, it's a feast day of the family. It's a feast day of what families do. You've all been through it. If you're not a parent, at least your parents took you to the church and had you consecrated to the Lord. And uh, as a priest, hundreds and hundreds of baptisms I've done, uh, going through this scene, uh, that the Old Testament scene of Mary and Joseph bringing their child for consecration. Their child was Jesus, the man God, who is going, he goes back to Nazareth with them. He goes back to, and was subject to them, the scripture says. And we know very, very little about that time. I think about it, I meditate on it, I think about the Holy Family, of what they did and what they didn't do, but we don't know, like I don't know about your families. It's a private thing. It's a very, very private and holy thing, the holy life of any family, but especially the life of family of Jesus and Mary and Joseph. But just remember, it was ten times more important to God that Jesus was read that way than if he was read any other way. Why? Because that's the way God willed it. And you know, when you get cranky and impatient and wonder what it's all about and why God's not in a hurry, I'll tell you one thing. God's never in a hurry, but he's never late. Amen?